Scottish DNA is one of the strangest in the world. Inside it are Ice Age hunters with dark skin and blue eyes, Bronze Age outsiders who erased bloodlines, and Viking genes stronger here than in Norway. The study also suggests that the Viking identity wasn't related to genetic background or ethnicity. It all got kicked uh, off uh, when we managed to sequence the first ancient human genome. Scotland's story isn't just written in stone. It's carved into blood. For years, we thought it was simple. Mostly Celtic, maybe a dash of Viking. But new DNA research has blown that apart. What scientists found is incredible. Fragments of forgotten people, from Mesolithic foragers to painted pics, even echoes of North Africa and Siberia. And here's the wild part. Those genes are still alive today. In remote glens and islands, you can find lineages that survived untouched for 10,000 years. That's why Scottish DNA is a living time capsule. You're watching Stone and Bone. If ancient mysteries fascinate you, hit subscribe and like right now, because we're about to dive deep into one of the most shocking genetic stories in Europe. 12,000 years ago, Scotland was buried under ice. No people, no forests, just glaciers grinding across the land. But as the ice melted, rivers came alive, animals returned, and small bands of hunters followed them north. Here's the crazy part. They didn't look like what we imagine as Scottish today. DNA reconstructions show dark skin, curly hair, and piercing blue eyes. These Mesolithic foragers fished the coasts, hunted red deer, and left behind only stone tools and fire pits. And what blows scientists away is this. Their DNA didn't vanish. In the Highlands and Hebrides, fragments of their bloodlines survive today. Genetic studies suggest 5-10% to of modern Scots carry markers from those Ice Age pioneers. That's like a genetic fossil, preserved for millennia by isolation while the rest of Europe mixed and changed. But the survival of those ancient bloodlines was about to be tested by a wave of newcomers who changed everything. About 4,500 years ago, Scotland's genetic story was rewritten. A new people arrived from Central Europe, the Beaker Folk. They carried metal tools, new farming methods, and their distinctive bell-shaped pottery. But it wasn't their culture that changed Scotland most. It was their DNA. Within a few centuries, the Beakers replaced up to 90% of Britain's male lineage. Think about that. Nine out of 10 men's bloodlines gone, erased from history. It wasn't one sudden conquest. It happened slowly, through families merging, marriages forming, and old lines fading away. But in rugged places like the Highlands and Islands, the older DNA clung on. That's why Scottish genes today are such a strange blend. Part Ice Age survivor, part Beaker newcomer. It's like weaving tartan with two very different threads. Quick question for you. If you've ever taken a DNA test, did you find anything surprising about your ancestry? Drop it in the comments. I'd love to know what shocked you the most. But the story didn't stop there. Another people rose in the north, warriors who painted their bodies blue and left Rome trembling. The Romans called them Picti, the painted ones. To outsiders, they were fierce, mysterious tribes who carved symbols into stone and refused to be conquered. For centuries, historians wondered, who were the Picts and why did they vanish? Here's the shocking truth. They never vanished at all. DNA from ancient burials shows the Picts were locals, descended from the same Mesolithic and Beaker bloodlines that had lived in Scotland for centuries. When Gaelic culture spread from the West, the Picts didn't disappear. They blended in. They traded their language and names, but their DNA lived on. And today, in the Highlands, you can still find traces of that lineage. So the next time someone calls the Picts a lost people, remember, they're still here living quietly in the blood of modern Scots.
When Rome marched north in the first century, they named this wild land Caledonia. But here's the thing. Rome never conquered Scotland. The legions built walls, forts, and roads, but the tribes of the north held them back. And yet, Rome still left its mark. The soldiers stationed along Hadrian's Wall weren't just Italians. They came from across the empire, Spain, Syria, North Africa. Some lived and died on Britain's frontier. Some took local wives, and their children carried ancestry that had traveled thousands of miles. Genetic studies show faint traces of Mediterranean and Middle Eastern markers in parts of Southern Scotland. Rare, but real. That means even without permanent conquest, the Roman Empire still injected global bloodlines into Scottish DNA. Not through emperors or battles, but through a handful of children born at the edge of the world. And when Rome pulled back, another wave of outsiders filled the vacuum, this time arriving in longships. So we find Vikings, you know, that has no Scandinavian genetic. Picture the northern coasts of Scotland in the late 700s. The silence shatters as Viking longships cut through the waves. But here's the twist. They didn't just raid. They settled. The Orkney and Shetland Islands became Norse strongholds, where Viking families farmed, traded, and raised children. And the DNA evidence is stunning. Up to 60% of male lines in Orkney today are Norse in origin, higher than in many parts of Norway itself. Think about that. Modern Orkney families carry more Viking blood than people living in Scandinavia. That's how deep the Norse imprint went. The Vikings spread their genes into the Hebrides and mainland coasts. Later, when the Normans, descendants of Vikings settled in France, rose in Scottish politics, they added even more Norse and Frankish DNA to lowland aristocracy. Names like Bruce, Stuart, and Sinclair trace their roots back to Viking shores. Coming up, we'll see how the famous Scottish clan system, long thought to be one great family tree, turned out to be something very different. For centuries, clans were seen as families, living genealogies tied to battlefields and lands. But DNA testing has revealed a shocking truth. Many clans weren't blood families at all. Take the McDonald's. Genetic studies show men with completely different Y chromosomes all carried the same surname. Why? Because after wars, shifts in power, or for sheer survival, families adopted the ruling clan's name. Belonging wasn't about blood. It was about protection. Now compare that to the Campbells. Their DNA is tightly linked, pointing to a single powerful founder whose descendants spread for generations. That's a true dynasty written into genes. So, clans weren't just family trees, they were banners, symbols of allegiance, forged by survival and politics. And Scotland's geography made it even stranger. On islands like Lewis and Islay, isolated communities preserved rare DNA markers that exist nowhere else in Europe. That's why Scotland's genome is such a patchwork, part Ice Age, part Viking, part Dynasty, part adopted name. Tell me this. If you discovered your clan name didn't match your DNA, would you still carry the banner proudly? Or would you feel betrayed? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And the story doesn't end there. Because hidden inside Scotland's DNA are outliers so rare, they connect the highlands to deserts and steppes thousands of miles away. Most of Scotland's DNA comes from Europe, Hunters, beaker farmers, Celts, Vikings. But every so often, scientists spot something that makes them stop in their tracks. In a few family lines, DNA markers trace back to North Africa, the Middle East, even Siberia. Less than 1% of Scots carry these rare signatures, but their presence is shocking. How did they get here? Some may have come with Roman recruits stationed on the frontier. Others could have traveled on Viking trade routes that stretched as far as Russia and beyond. Imagine this, a fisherman on Lewis carrying a strand of DNA that began in the Sahara Desert. A Highland family unknowingly holding genes that once crossed the Silk Road. These outliers prove that Scotland was never completely isolated. Even at the edge of the world, 
the blood of strangers found a way in. If there's one trait the world associates with Scotland, it's red hair. But here's what makes it wild. Only about 1-2% to of the world has natural red hair, while in Scotland it's around 13%, the highest anywhere. That fiery trait comes from mutations in the MC1R gene, which also produces pale skin and freckles. Scientists think it was an adaptation to northern latitudes, helping people absorb more sunlight. But it comes with a cost. Higher sensitivity to pain and a greater risk of skin cancer. And that's not the only marker. Certain genetic conditions show up more often in Scots than in other Europeans because small, isolated communities amplified rare variants. The same rugged terrain that preserved ancient bloodlines also locked in medical quirks. It's a reminder that DNA isn't just about the past. It shapes living Scots today. But Scotland's DNA story doesn't end in the Highlands. Over the last three centuries, millions of Scots left their homeland. The Highland clearances, famine, and opportunity abroad pushed families onto ships bound for America, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Here's the staggering part. Over 30 million people worldwide now claim Scottish ancestry. In the US alone, Scots and Scots-Irish settlers shaped entire regions. The Appalachian frontier, for example, still carries not just their music and culture, but also their DNA and modern testing kits can trace those lineages back with pinpoint precision. Someone in Texas or Nova Scotia might discover their ancestry doesn't just say Scotland. It says Skye, Orkney, or Argyle. The regional signatures are that strong. So Scottish DNA didn't just survive. It spread across the world, embedding itself into the foundations of new nations. From the Highlands to the Appalachians, it's a legacy that still flows in blood. Scotland's DNA isn't a straight line. It's a tapestry. Woven from Ice Age hunters, Bronze Age migrants, painted Picts, and Viking settlers. It holds faint echoes of Rome, whispers of distant deserts, and rare markers that defy explanation. What makes it so strange isn't just who came here, but how much survived? In rugged glens and islands, blood-preserved stories that history forgot. And today, millions around the world carry those stories without even knowing it. Every Scot alive is proof of survival, and every descendant abroad is living evidence that identity can outlast empires, invasions, and time itself. You've been watching Stone and Bone. If these hidden histories fascinate you, Hit subscribe and like right now. It helps bring this channel to more people who carry fragments of the past in their blood. And tell us in the comments, which part shocked you the most? The Ice Age survivors, the Viking legacy, or the rare DNA from faraway lands? Your answer might inspire our next story.